All right, welcome back to our Shoots and Ladders game. Uh, we left off in our last video correcting some errors. So I'm going to go ahead and compile. And we have a number of um, errors. One of the first errors is that you can't find the method get players. So we'll need to make a method in order to get the players out of the players array. Um, so what we need to do in the game is create a players array. So we'll go to the top, private player players. And that's the array that we're using here when we create a new player. And then we'll need a method to get those players. So we'll just create a getter down here. Um, here's our assessors and mutators. So we'll always have a So we'll write the method public player and it's an array, so it's going to return an array type. Then we say get players. And then we just return the variable players. Which we um, created up here. Let's compile again. See if that fixes a few of the errors. Okay, we're down from 14 to 6. Now the next error says that the constructor player in the player class cannot, does not match um, our um, instance of passing in color, then a number, and then a string. So we need to go back to the player class and we have to make the constructor do that same thing. So we need to do add a color instance and then a name and then um, we need to make those things in the same order. So I'm going to put position here. Well, actually you could put um, we want to know its position first, and then we want to know its um, color, and then its name. So color has to be at the top. Color um, position does not have to be as a parameter because we are creating an instance of position, which is basically zero, 0 on the board when we create the player. But we do need to know its color and the player's name, which when we go back to game is what we're doing here color and then if it's going to be it's going to be player one player two etc so let's compile that and now we've corrected all of our errors okay so let's um, get back to the main part now we need a uh, win loop or um, a game loop where we can um, ask the player if they want to play again. So we're going to go down below our play method and above our main method. And um, I like to call these guys game loops. They, they'll let you play as long as you want to until you hit something else. So we're going to say we need to set a boolean variable for winning or not. So we'll say boolean uh, win is equal to false. And then as long as we haven't won, so we'll say while not win. And that's our loop. As long as we haven't won, we need to keep playing. So we'll um, system dot out dot print player. 
plus players at current player dot get name plus apostrophe s turn and we can also say um, type roll to roll or we could say type r to roll period semicolon okay so if you haven't made a current player variable you need to go check that you have one so we created one in a previous video private in current player then when we construct a player when we start a game the current player is the default is zero and then we're adding the num number of players here and this creates the players for us and puts them in the player array and then here we're getting the name of the player and saying it's like player one's turn to roll or Tom's turn to roll so then we need to scan in that what they're going to do so then there's typing in R so scanner dot next and um, then we type in win is equal to players current payer dot roll and then we're going to um, add the graphics so we want to create an instance of the board J panel board is equal to new board and we're referring to this board so we'll use the this op operator frame.get content pane dot add and we want to add the board to our game frame.pack frame.set visible and we'll make it true so this creates the general frame and adds the board which is the background has the background image in it I believe if you go into board you can see here that it adds the image the background image right here so let's get go back to game and then we say if not win then current player is equal to current player bracket current player I'm sorry parentheses current player plus one modulus num players and this increments the player And then we end our while loop. So I'm going to put in some end comments and loop and win conditional. This is end game. Yeah, and then I'm, I think I'm short a Let's see. I'm short a thing. Let's see. Hold on a second. System dot out. Print ln player plus players. Whoops. No. Plus player at current player dot get name plus and then we're printing out that they won.
that's that's the class one so I believe I'm missing a curly brace somewhere oh one the wonders of curly braces so let's see those two match and then these two match this is the end of the switch end of the loop end of play method these two match these two match I feel like I'm missing a missing one somewhere. Let me compile and see if it'll find it for me. Oh, let's see. Illegal start of type. So that's where it, it thinks I'm missing something. I'm gonna stop the video and I'll come back in a second when I found it. All right, so our, our problem was is that the end of the play method should be after our game loop. So creating the players um, here, we're going to enter num players. Here we're going to create the players. And then here we're going to loop through the players um, and let them play and then actually our end of our game loop should be down here right before the end of the class you can highlight the last curly brace to make sure it matches the first curly brace which is at the beginning of the play method so let's compile And then we need to um, fix our scanner. And let's see, we need to So we're waiting for the user here to um, type in R to roll so we can say string answer is equal to scanner.next and then we're just waiting for the user to type in something and then it's actually going to automatically roll for us. We could put a conditional in here that says you know if answer is yes then go ahead and roll. Um, or uh, else, you know, thank you for playing. So, um, but we're just going to run it. As long as the user types something in, we're going to run it. Let's see if that'll work. Oh, because it's uh, reader, not scanner. And it should actually work without this. Yes. Okay. So now we should be able to run our project and see if it works. So we're going to enter two players. And we're going to type in R. And it said you rolled a five. And we're going to type in R again. Looks like we're having problems with our graphic screen. And that player rolled a 5. So it's player's one turn again. So our, um, our project is working, but we have a little bit of problem with our um, graphics background. 
Okay, so I was able to find the error. What we need to do is go into board and we need to, you're missing a curly brace at the end of the catch statement and then down here where the catch statement was you need to erase that curly brace and then we can compile and run type in two players and roll and now we get a board you rolled a three and now it's players two's turn and so we'll hit roll and then that person rolled a one so we're a little off on um, we're a little off on the the circles because if he rolled a one that should be there and if you rolled a three it should be there so in order to fix that if you need to adjust um, what you're doing you need to go back to the position on the board and play with the number of pixels so I'm going to try 27 here and here and then I'm going to try uh, let's say 243 here and 240. See, I thought there was another in the get y one. Yep, here's another 27. 243. So you can change it by a couple of pixels each time and then rerun it until you get the exact placement of the game pieces that you need. And this also depends somewhat on the size of your background that you use. So that looks good. Now it looks by just adding a couple pixels and looking at where they're going you can see that they're pretty well on the board now. So that's it for shoots and ladders and I'll see you next time.